Hi, this is Bob from Hobby Concepts, and today I've got this day cab work truck built from a king hauler. It's uh, it's a little little uh, <laughs> very cute little truck. Um, has a headache rack. It's got a very unique battery mounting location. Has a light bar. It's got several little kind of custom touches that uh, I'm going to hit on in this video. I'm not going to show step by step building the truck, but I want to concentrate on the way the battery's put in how to install the headache rack, how to install the light bar. Um, there's going to be a lot of links in the video description. So if you've got questions, go to the video description, take a look at the links. I think this truck turned out great. It looks beautiful. It's a new color I've never painted before. Let's get started. Okay, as I get started on this uh, King Hauler day cab project, the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, is cut up the body. And uh, the reason for that is that I can be painting it while I'm working on the rest of the truck. So I've got a separate video on how to make a day cab body. I'll put a link in the description. But I'm going to go ahead, cut the body, uh, sand off the mold lines, and uh, build the back plate and get it ready um, for paint. And I'm also going to show the painting in this video because I'm going to do some stripes on it and things that I maybe haven't done on a video before. So step one cut the body, check the uh, video description for a link on how to do that. So I've got my, uh, my day cab body cut, sleepers cut off, made the uh, back bulkhead for it. So uh, that's looking pretty good. I glued the uh, hatch in and then used some uh, baking soda and super glue to fill the holes. Um, I just rough sanded it right now and threw a coat of primer on it so I could see where my marks were. I've still got some finish work to do, but before I do that, I'm gonna drill the holes for my light bar. So I'm replacing the, um, the five upper lights and the horns with this light bar. And uh, to do that, it comes with this plastic piece on the bottom. So I will take that and use it for a template. I'll draw a center line on it, a center line on my uh, cab and then I'll mark the four holes and then one of the cutouts for the for the uh, servo horn. So I'm going to go ahead and get those holes drilled before I completely um, smooth finish the top of this cab. And uh, so I'll do that. Be back show you what the holes look like. Okay, so I've got the uh, four holes drilled and I cut a little slot and just worked it out with my X-Acto knife. So. We'll just test fit this here, make sure it's going to work. Yep. Okay. So that's how it fits on the top, and I will glue a little, you can see the, I used some pieces of plastic to cover the holes before I filled them. I'll glue a little uh, piece of plastic in here to hold this wiring back in the back corner. And then I'll go ahead, pop this off, refinish the body, I'm going to paint this. Um, the body's going to be gunmetal stripes and light gray, and so I will paint this uh, gunmetal to match the stripes. And we'll be back uh, when the body is primered and we'll talk about painting stripes. As I continue to just prep some parts, I stripped the chrome off of the quarter fenders, the uh, mud flap brackets, and the uh, visor because I'm going to paint those. And then one other thing I did is I took uh, the frame cross members, two of them, and I cut this edge here off so it was straight on the side. And you can see how this is straight. I just cut it off with a bandsaw and just cleaned it up with some sandpaper. But that gives me a a, uh, a flat side on two of these. And you will see why later. But those are ready to go. So now I can put my frame together. One other thing I did is I built some assemblies. I built the transmission. I used a 55 turn motor. Transmission is built just completely stock, uh, except for ball bearings, of course. And I do have a separate video on how to build the transmission. I also built the rear ends. Um, same thing, they have ball bearings in them. Uh, they're 
all stock parts other than that and I built them just according to the Tamiya specs and I have a video on how to build the rear ends too so I've got my transmission rear ends I've got parts off to be painted so now I can uh, put some of the other assemblies together like the frame and the suspension and we'll go ahead and do that so as you can see I've got my uh, one frame half put together got the servos mounted um, nothing unusual at all so now it's time to mount the cross members and I'm going to take these cross members that I have squared off and this one is going to be mounted here with the flat side facing this way and this one is going to be right there with the flat side facing that way and I will leave out the center cross member and notice that these cross members that the web faces up so I'll go ahead and mount those and put the other side on so I got my frame assembled um, and now what I'm going to do I took uh, some half inch aluminum strip cut it to length like this and I'm going to mount them right here this one's going to mount just a little bit this side of halfway between these mounts here and this one's going to mount just below this bottom bolt hole so I'll go ahead and just it's not super critical I'm just going to hold them in place center punch them and then I'll use my little three millimeter drill tap to, uh, to drill it and that also taps it at the same time and then I'm going to uh, bolt this on and I've got to space it up about an eighth of an inch so I've got some little plastic washers here and I'll use four washers underneath each side and mount these like that underneath and that will replace that center cross member and give me the chassis strength I need. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that up. We'll be back. So here's my uh, chassis with those two braces installed. And you can see how we squared those off. So what we got going on here is going to be a battery tray. And uh, because with the short cab we lose our battery mounting location. And we're going to work on that some more. We'll continue to show you how that goes. But with this setup, these replace that center brace so our cross members are still super strong and gives us that battery mounting location that we need. We squared out the ends so the battery would fit in there better and there would be room for the plug up here. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and assemble the rest of the chassis. I'll do the, the rear end, the front end, and the uh, transmission and get those in make sure everything clears and we'll move on so you can see here that I've got my my chassis assembled I've got my gearbox in I've got the rear ends and I have other videos that show how all this stuff goes in um, basically this is all pretty straightforward a biggie on the rear ends is to make sure you get the transmission bumps the opposite direction and the little there's little bump stops that go towards the frame but other than that we're we're completely stock except for how I did these cross members and this all clears just fine and I checked it and with a battery in here the drive shaft clears just fine no matter where the suspension is so now we're ready to uh, start building the rest of the truck I've got my base plate for the day cab with the little day cab lip on the back so that'll bolt on here I've stripped the chrome off of these quarter fenders and painted those with this uh, royal gray and I'll, I'll do more on the painting in a little while so we'll get those on and then the great thing about Tamiya trucks is there's so many customizing options so normally the the truck comes with these really beautiful chrome rims and they really are nice but I'm gonna go for that industrial kind of a work truck look and these are just a little too shiny for me so I'm going to go with some aluminum uh, rims, and they're not as shiny. I think they look a lot better on a work-type truck. Plus, they have a, a hub that hides the axle nut. Here's the, here's the set of the rears. The rears also have a hub 
that hides the nut. And for the tires, the stock tires are very nice, but again, I'm going to go with this knobby tread, more industrial look tire. So I'll put these um, tires and wheels together. They go together just exactly like the stock ones, and I'll get those on and uh, get my quarter fenders on, and then the, the fuel tanks uh, will be the stock fuel tanks. I'm going to go ahead and put those on. Then I'm going to do some modifications on the step and the bumper, so I'll come back and, and show those when I do them. As you can see, I've got a few parts painted. I, I disassembled the light bar and painted the parts gunmetal, painted the visor gunmetal. I painted the fenders and the, uh, the rear parts of the back bumper with the royal gray. So those are pretty much ready to, to get reassembled. I also have assembled the fuel tanks. Before I install those, or install the tires and wheels, which I've also assembled, I'm going to add this headache rack. Um, this came off of eBay. Uh, it looks spectacular. It's all aluminum. It comes with, uh, with chains and hooks that mount in this area right here. There's a plate that comes off with some pins that hold the chains. I'll show that in detail. And I'm going to mount it right here. It's going to bump up against these brackets for the uh, um, fuel tanks and then my cab floor will go here so the back of the cab will be positioned correctly with this now this is threaded for bolts up from the bottom so what I'm going to have to do is drill holes through the frame and then drive a bolt up from the bottom sides I'm going to go ahead and put that on now because it's, it gets a little tricky to mount all that stuff in there later and uh, I'll, I'll show you how I do that. So to mount this, um, what I've done is I, I've taken a pencil and just made a little pencil mark next to where the threaded hole is. Then I'll put this in position. So now I've got my pencil mark in alignment where my hole is going to be. And then I'm just going to scratch a little mark on the side of the frame with the tip of an exacto knife. I'll do that on both sides. Right where the mark is. So now I've got a little exacto knife mark here. I'll take a, uh, a straight edge and just Mark that in the frame. So now I've got my little marks where I want that to be. I'll take a counter punch and punch a uh, divot on each side. And now I'm going to go ahead and drill through that with an eighth inch drill. And then I will bolt it up from the bottom side. Before I mount this, I just thought I'd show off the back side here. These little pins are, and you can drop the chain through to the other side and then just hook it over a pin and uh, then you can put the plate back on to hold it. I'm going to leave those off for now. Um, I've drilled the holes here in the frame and I, I enlarged them slightly larger than an eighth of an inch so I can account for a little bit of slop in my bolts. Great that bit. Anyway, uh, I'm going to use a short Tamiya screw and thread it up from the bottom and I'll use a washer. They come with these, the headache rack comes with these bolts which I'm assuming are designed to mount around the frame and clamp it down. So if you don't want to drill holes you can just use these and just clamp it like a big U-bolt. Um, I just like the little cleaner look of uh, mounting it on. So I'm going to go ahead and, and bolt this up from the bottom and see what it looks like. Well, there I got the two bolts holding it on. It's nice and strong. Um, my battery slides in there just fine. So uh, now I'm going to mount my, my deck here in my back into my bulkhead is going to be here. 
But what I want to do is make a battery cover to cover this up. So I'm going to use some of diamond plate uh, aluminum, RC4 wheel drive aluminum, and make a plate for here, a plate for here, and a plate for behind the coupler. Before that, I've actually got to um, install a coupler plate so I can fit everything. And uh, while I'm doing that, I'll probably go ahead and install the fuel tanks and the back bumper. And then I'll uh, make these plates and I'll show how I do that. Notice I have not put the chains on, the, on this yet, but uh, I can do that a little bit later time. I still have easy access to the back. So yeah, those, those look uh, really nice. Kind of give it that, that heavy work truck look. Well, I put the tires and rims on. Put the uh, quarter fenders on. Those are painted in that royal gray. Side tanks on. Um, so now it's time to start thinking about electronics. And I've decided I'm going to go ahead and put a Tamiya MFC in this truck. I'm not going to show every detail of the MFC because I've done it in a lot of other trucks. And you can see those videos. But I'm going to show the things that are specific to this truck. Since it's a day cab, there's no sleeper, so there's no place to mount the MFC, so we have to mount it in the cab. In order to do that, we've got to put the speaker somewhere. So we're going to use these um, front mount speaker brackets. And I'll put a link in the description to these. They mount underneath the screw here, and then they mount on the back side of the shock tower behind those bolts there and the MFC speaker fits on them and mounts up front. I'm going to go ahead and mount the speaker. Um, then I'm going to show you a few tricks I, I do to make the sound even better. I love it when, uh, when these things go together because you don't do very much, like put the wheels on and a couple things and all of a sudden it looks like a truck. So I got my front speaker brackets on and we're going to come back to those in a little bit, but I, I've got the body primered I painted the sides with the gunmetal. And remember, I'm going to do gunmetal stripes with a light gray uh, called royal gray body. So the way I'm going to do it is I paint this the um, gunmetal. Then I'm going to cover up what I want to be stripes with, uh, to me, a masking tape. Then I will reprimer and then paint the light gray. So to me, it makes the masking tape in a couple different sizes. This is 10 millimeter and 6 millimeter. And, boy, I like to me a masking tape because it doesn't have any paint bleed. When you put it down, the, uh, the, the uh, paint does not leak under the edges, so you get a nice sharp line. So what I'm going to do, pull a piece off here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay a piece of this tape right underneath this uh, this trim band here and that'll be my 10 millimeter stripe so I'm going to start out by just laying it down here I know this might not look really great on camera but uh, I'll just lay this down the whole length and continue it past the doors And it's important to get it, like there's a body line here, get it sucked into the body line, suck tightly around the, the door hinge. My tape, don't stick together on me. And pull it all the way across the body. Same thing, make sure I get it tight around here, around this lip and then pull it around the back. So I'm going to go ahead and press that down good and then I'll do the other side. I uh, have the 10 millimeter tape down. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this 3 millimeter tape. I mean it makes a 3 millimeter tape that you can actually do curves with. But all I'm going to do with it here is lay it down for a spacing. And then I'm going to lay down the six millimeter tape, so I'll have a ten millimeter tape or a ten millimeter stripe, a three millimeter space, and a six millimeter stripe. So I'm going to lay that down, put the other tape down, peel this back up. 
and uh, that'll give me the uh, the two nice stripes with a with a correct spacing. So I will lay that down and come back and show you what I'm talking about. So there's my three millimeter stripe. So now it's time to take a piece of six millimeter tape. lay it down here just below the three millimeter and I pretty much just do this all freehand like this work it into that crack there work it around this mount for the air cleaner, get it tight around the door hinge, and tight around that little bump, and around the back. So now, as I mentioned, I'll just take that three millimeter tape out and now I'll have my two stripes properly spaced so I'm going to go ahead and do that on the other side and then press these down real good and then we'll get painting again. Well, I've got um, both sides masked off here so now what I'm going to do is I've done the same thing on the uh, back panel I painted it gunmetal. I'll lay it in here and then I'll stick it in with a piece of tape and then I'll tape across this so I have matching stripes. So I'll go ahead and mask that off. So my body's masked, my back panel is masked, and what I'm going to do now is go finish painting it. And I will, uh, that looks good. I will uh, first put another coat of primer on it. Uh, the, the to me a thin light gray primer and the reason for that is I want to have a solid color base coat underneath. I don't want to spray the gray over two different colors here because it's a, a fairly light color and then I'll paint the uh, the royal gray. So that'll take me another uh, day or so and I'll keep working on the truck while I'm painting that but uh, we'll go paint it. I mentioned earlier um, boxing in the speaker for better sound. Now I've done it with just clear packing tape, just wrapping it around here which works fine, but lately I've um, used plastic. So I've got a piece of cardboard here, just cut a little um, template that slides in here, just to make sure everything fits. I like to do the cardboard thing and you can see how that boxes in the sides. So I will cut that out of plastic and then just put some double sticky tape on the back side of these and make two sides and then I'll do the same thing for the front I'll show that and that also has the advantage of when you look through the grill you won't see anything so uh, I just use old pieces this is some sign plastic um, I managed to score a pile of this stuff from a dumpster one but once but uh, you know for sale signs or any of that kind of plastic works fine of course you can buy cheap plastic also but I will make the two sides and box those in and do the front you can see I mounted the uh, the steps here and uh, then I'm going to use cardboard templates to make um, templates for the decking so we'll we'll get along to that here in a minute the great thing about this uh, styrene plastic is it's very easy to uh, to work with just take my little cardboard template here Draw a couple lines on it. Just use my X-Acto knife and just score it. You don't have to cut all the way through, you just need to make a score line on it. Then you just snap it. Voila! Then this should slide in here. Get some double sticky tape and tape that up and then I've got my two sides. I made a plastic piece for the front and then I used some of this just peel and stick film to, uh, to 
cover it and to help hold it on. <coughs> Just wraps around there. Now when you can see through the grill, you won't see anything funny. Okay, so I've got my body painted and it's time to peel off the tape, which is always scary. Generally, it's awesome because it looks so good. But you also get to find out where the paint seeped underneath. And by gosh, we got that one pretty darn good. Get this side here. Oh yeah, no paint seepage at all. Looks great. Okay, so there's my my paint stripes. Now I'm going to take it back and clear coat it. Pull the tape off the other side first. Um, I've already clear coated the back bulkhead so it's ready to go. So we'll get that clear coated and you know I can never resist just to see kind of how that's going to look and that's going to look pretty good. So okay clear coat let that dry keep working on the truck. On the uh, front bumper, uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove these two license plate brackets because I figure a work truck, they would get broken off anyway. So I'm going to use my bandsaw and cut them off. I'll be right back. Back from the bandsaw, got those cut off, and then I'm going to use this liquid chrome pen to uh, just cover up the, the black area kind of hard to see it anyway from um, from up above but I'm just kind of finish it off here and when this dries into a chrome it's really hard to see um, I like these I use them for a lot of things matter of fact I'm gonna do the door handles here with them chrome there. So uh, I've got my body painted, I've got it gloss. One of the things I have to do is remove this brace right here because the front speaker mount won't fit with that brace in the way. So I'll just put that out with my side cutters and now my body will will fit fine and you don't need that brace because when you mount the grill um, it stiffens up the bumper anyway and it sits a little further forward so it doesn't interfere with the brace so now I can go ahead uh, my body's painted it's clear coated I can go ahead and mount some of the accessories on the body including things like the headlights the air cleaners which I painted the intake the exhaust windshield and then of course I'll reassemble my um, uh, light bar and get that stuck on there. We'll see how it looks. See, I mounted the grill and mounted the light bar that's now painted. Um, you can see how I had glued that little piece of plastic in there to hold the wiring up in the corner. I do that now more and more. One of the tricks, I, I've showed this before, but I thought it was worth repeating, was getting these LEDs in this front fender they're too big to fit through the hole and if you make the hole bigger they fall out so what I do is um, remove the, the plug and to do that I just mark the side where the darker color wire is and then you just lift up this little tab with the point of a knife and you can pull the wire out don't want to lift it too far. Okay, and then the wires come out. Now they'll fit through the, the fender, but the LED won't. So when you put your 
light on top of it, it stays in place. And then to reinstall the wires, you just push that tab button back down a little bit. This is a great trick, really helps with running wiring. And then again, I've got the the darker colored wire goes on the side with my mark. and latch back in there and the plugs back in. So I do that quite a bit with the MFC plugs to make them easier to run. A couple other little modifications that are required. One is that uh, this plate won't fit anymore because of the battery being in the center. So what I did was drill a hole right here in the coupler plate and I put this together and just put a little spacer on it and we'll mount this in here and that will give me my operation arm for the coupler I'll have to make a shorter rod and what I'll do is just use some uh, threaded rod some 256 model airplane threaded rod in the same ball joints and that puts my my coupler back behind the battery. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use these nylon spacers to raise up the coupler plate. And the reason for that is I will need to tuck the battery plate underneath it. So I've got these little nylon spacers and I'll use four of those when I bolt this down which will raise it up a little bit. So I'll go ahead and put that on and we'll kind of That'll kind of clean up the back end. I've got the bumper mounted. I've got the mud flaps mounted. I used black mud flaps off a of grand hauler, and I painted the uh, mud flap supports with um, gun metal, which is the trim color. So going together nicely. Okay, so um, what I've done is I just ran the wiring up the frame and pulled it up here in front of the transmission. You can't bring anything around the back side of the floor plate because um, there's no sleeper. Also, you can see I cut a notch here in the floor plate and that is for the battery wiring. So now it's time for me to mount the floor plate and what I do is I pull the, the MFC control panel wires up through the front here like that. And then this will mount down here. Pull those other wires out of the way. But what I want to do is I want to get this connector for the MFC down through this notch and underneath this cross member. So I'll feed that through first. And then when I mount the floor plate, I'll just get these wires in the notch. And the reason I feed it through first is there's not enough room to fit the plug in there after the floor plate's mounted down. So now I'm gonna go ahead and mount this down and then once that's down, I can stick down the MFC. I'll actually show that. I just wanna get this floor plate mounted and get these wires up here. These are my wires for the tail light, my speaker wire. I haven't pulled up the front wires yet, but I will. So everything will come up to the MFC through this area. One other thing I'll mention is I, I make a little bracket out of a scrap aluminum that will mount underneath this bolt right here. And that allows me uh, something to mount my receiver against. So it just stands up and Put the receiver on there and double sticky tape it to this and gets it kind of tucked up out of the way. So now I'll tape this down and 
on a day cab truck, it needs to be, it's a tight fit, um, it needs to be far enough forward to clear the back bulkhead, but not, not, you can't go any extra because the transmission hump's in the way, and you have to clear the body on both sides. So it really only fits in one spot, and uh, I'll go ahead and tape it down, and then you can see my wiring is all kind of coming out in the right place. And uh, we'll get that mounted. So this is all stuck down. Everything is, uh, is looking like it's supposed to. Now what I want to do is, you can see this MFC wire is really long. So I want to have my plug back here at the back end. So I'm going to use a couple of uh, these stick-on clips to hold the wire in here against the frame. And that way when I drop my battery in, the plug will be down here at this end, which is which is where I want it to be for ease of access, plus there's room to tuck it in here. It's tight, but it will tuck in. So I'm going to tie that down. Once that's tied down, I'm going to work on, on my aluminum decking. So what I've done here is made the uh, pieces of aluminum decking. Um, the way I do it is I start with a, a piece of thin cardboard and make a template. So this one fits in here and there's a couple screw holes already in the frame so this one will screw down with a couple of a uh, couple of screws then this one cardboard template and the aluminum piece will be the the rear deck here and I'll double st sticky tape that one down and this one will be the battery cover and it will tuck underneath it's going to be kind of hard to see. Let's see here. It'll tuck underneath this front piece, and then these sides will bend down, and it'll it'll grasp onto the frame with the bent down side. So I've got the aluminum piece cut, but I haven't bent it yet. All uh, and it actually looks like that. I'll bend the sides down, I'll clamp it in my vise and, and bend it down. It'll bend in a little bit tight so when it fits down over the frame it's just a friction fit. I've done it before, it works really good. So I'll go ahead and bolt this one down, stick this one down and bend this. You'll notice this one looks a little different because this, these I've already peeled off the uh, um, clear plastic film and this one still has a clear plastic film on it until I get it bent so uh, that'll take care of my decking and then I can go on to finish up this uh, body this truck is getting close to being done so here's the decking mounted and the decking mounted and then there's my piece that's all bent and so to hold it down it just slides underneath that forward piece which is bolted down and you got to push it forward, bend it a little bit, and it'll fit underneath there. And then just presses down, and the and the sides are strong enough to hold it down. So there we go. The decking is complete. The battery's hidden. Um, I also, and I've done stuff like this before. I also made a, a little PDF. It's not very fancy of the templates for the decking. So if you want to get a copy of that, just email me, and I'll email one to you. But uh, I do have those decking templates are at least a place to start from. They're not, they're not uh, perfect and you have to kind of schmooze them for each truck, but hey, it's better than starting completely from scratch. Okay, so uh, now really what I've got to do is plug in my MFC and do some testing and uh, do some final detailing on the body and uh, get everything plugged in and test it out and we'll, be, uh, we'll have a finished truck. I know I've showed the MFC setup a million times, but I figure it never hurts to go through it. One of the things I like to do is plug things in and just start testing. So notice I haven't plugged in any lights. The motor's not plugged in. But I have the speaker and the three cables that go to the control panel plugged in. And then I plugged in my radio. So J4 goes to channel 1. J6 goes to channel 2. Notice they're not in order. J5 goes to channel 3. 
J7 goes to channel 4, and that's my shift servo plugged into channel 5, which on this radio is this switch right here. So I always like to test it, I'll turn it on. It'll start up. I'll press the map button. I'll do the mapping, so up to down into center, right to left into center, up to down into center, right to left into center, and then press the button again. So now I've got my MFC set up. This truck, of course, being as tight as it was, does not get the vibration motor. I leave that off on a lot of my trucks now anyway because it tends to rattle things apart. So uh, there we go, the MSC's up and running. I'll, well, let's see here. Yep, throttle's working, steering. You can hear the turn signal sounds. So. We've got the basics of the MFC running now. I'm very comfortable to go ahead and start tying up all my wiring and doing that. Now, I've got my, my body right here with my light bar. My light bar is going to plug into channel 6. I can plug that in right now and scoot this back a little bit. So you can see the light bar. That looks really cool. And every time I flip the switch, it's going to get a different um, function until it goes off. So you've got uh, function one, two, three, four, five, six off. Actually, I think there's only five, but um, that's nice to be able to run it from the radio. So anyway, uh, that, and that plugs into six. And I've got my wiring here to plug in. We'll be doing that in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and start plugging in all the body wiring. And when I get done with that, I'll come back and show you. And then we'll, we'll finish up a few little details on the body. So now that I've got the truck running, and it is running, I went ahead and hooked up the motor. And when I push forward, it goes backwards. Okay simple solution it's so obvious that a lot of people try to reprogram their radios and everything no you reverse the wires to the motor now when you push forward it goes forward and the MFC has a system where you have to push reverse twice to get it to back up and that's a safety feature so you don't go from forward to reverse so Set up the MFC first, set up the reverse beeper, get all that working, and then hook up the motor. A couple little uh, things left to do with the body. One is I drilled a couple holes up here to mount the uh, visor and drilled some holes in the visor, so I'll use some little screws to mount that. And the second thing is I made this, this cover plate. I always glue a couple of just squares of plastic inside and then the cover plate, I painted it with some, uh, just some Tamiya primer. Normally I put a half a driver figure, a Tamiya driver figure in here, but Tamiya's been out of them for quite a while, so we won't do that on this one. It's, I cut a notch here in the back corner to fit the wiring. So this will just fit in here. It's just kind of a snap-in fit with this plastic. And then now I've got a cover that covers up all the electronics and cleans up the look from the inside. So I'll screw that on and uh, I've just got a couple wires to plug in. I took a, a short servo extension and plugged it into the receiver to accept the light wiring from the light bar. That way I don't have to try and reach around the side if I ever take the body off. Uh, it makes it easier to plug it and unplug it. So. I'll get the body mounted, finish up the uh, the standard King Hauler exhaust, and I think we'll be about done. And just like that, it's done. Um, turned out really, really good. I uh, I'm very happy. Uh, a couple little 
quick details. Remember I said I was going to use some model airplane threaded rod to make the connector, but I actually used one of the leftover grab rails and just put a ball connector on each end and the cool thing about that is it puts the it puts the rod out in the center. So that works just fine. I've got my my battery of course tucked away underneath here and it fits perfect. The connector is a very tight fit in there but it fits and this just tucks underneath this lip up here just under the back and press fit holds it down. We're not this isn't a race car so uh, that'll stay real good. The uh, headache rack is uh, great, super solid. I added, installed the chains just hanging from those pins. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, I put a grab bar on the back panel here. I had some extra ones left over from the kit, so I just added it on, which I thought might make it a little easier to get the, the panel in and out, but that worked out nicely. And uh, I bolted on the visor, like I said, which I had stripped and painted gunmetal. So I repainted the, uh, the light bar parts gunmetal, I painted that gunmetal, the stripes are gunmetal, the rear fender brackets are gunmetal, this is royal gray, and the body is royal gray. The rest of the parts I just left stock. Um, you can see how I put that black, well, probably can't see it, but... I put that black film inside, so looking in the grill is there's no wires or anything showing. Um, looks really good, so we'll fire it up here. Let's see. So fire it up. Looks pretty darn good. Got my 55 turn motor. Re 55 turn motor really gives you the ability to run it at a slow speed. Um, you can see my light bar here with the different functions. Um, that, that works great. Real happy about, with that. Um, the of course, the standard Tamiya lighting, we've got the horn. Put it back up here. And then we've got our tail lights, our turn signals. Of course, we can run forward. And then brake lights. So forward, brake. And then we've got, so there's the tail lights, headlights, fog lights, and back off again for some emergency flashers. And uh, a very nice, clean overall look. I really like this headache rack. So again, um, I'm going to post links in the description of this video for all the little weird parts and pieces I use, which would be the aluminum wheels, the block tread tires. I'm going to post a link to my video about how to make a day cab. Um, the light bar, I'll post a link. This headache rack, which I got off eBay, I'll post a link for that. And uh, be a couple other links in there, so check the video description for that. It's, uh, it's neat to have a truck that's just a little different than all the other trucks. And so here my goal was to make a work truck. It was to show you how to put a battery mounted in the frame. I, I think it succeeded well. It's just a really neat looking truck. It's just a little bit different. And that's a great thing about these Tamiya trucks. Just a little bit of work. Man, your truck is different than everybody else's. And that's, I think, really, really cool. So, uh, look, I really appreciate you guys watching. Thumbs up. Please give me a thumbs up. I really like those. Uh, please subscribe to my channel, pass the word around. We've got a Facebook group, uh, look in the um, video description for a link to that. 
um, and hopefully <laughs> I'll get on a little bit better schedule of building trucks. I, I've been building a lot of trucks for customers and it's kept me from doing some of these uh, videos, but we'll try to stay back on track for that. I've got a few more coming up here pretty quick uh, and a couple more um, buyer uh, electronics videos. So anyway, please subscribe. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. J5 goes to channel 3 and J7 goes to channel 4. So that's the first. Ah, oh, shoot. <laughs>